Hey guys, Lindsay with The Scrap Room. Today I'm going to show you how to make some custom dividers using Canva, starting with nothing but a blank page. By the end, you'll have a template that you can use over and over again, not to mention a full matching set that you can use for your own planner, notebook, or journal, or even turn into a physical or digital product for your shop. You won't need the pro version of Canva for this project. The free version will work great. In this video, I'll walk you through setting up a template that you can use over and over again to create countless divider sets quickly and easily. You'll be able to customize your divider size and number of tabs and drag and drop in digital images to customize the pages. You'll also be able to adjust the tab colors to match your images. Be sure to watch the video through to the end. I've got a few slides you'll want to screenshot for easy reference. Plus, I'll even share my bundle of magical animal digital paper designs that I've used in this video if you stick around to the very end. The first slide that you'll want to snap a picture of is this one. It shows some of the most popular planner and journal sizes and their dimensions, so you'll have them right at your fingertips for this project. Remember, this is just the page dimensions. You'll want your divider tabs to stick out more than that, so always create in a workspace that's about a half an inch wider. Also, if you plan to print these at home, be sure to check your printer's capabilities. Most home printers can't print over eight and a half inches wide and therefore can't print US letter divider pages with tabs. So just be aware and create dividers that are small enough to print with your setup. Today I'm going to make A5 dividers and the main page will need to be 5.8 inches by 8.3 inches plus the half inch tabs. So I'm going to be working in a US letter size workspace. So on the Canva homepage, I'm going to start with a custom size workspace that's eight and a half by 11 inches. This template is really easy to set up. You could use the rectangle tool for a solid shape, but since we're going to be making these with some fun digital images, we need to use a frame. Once your page finishes loading, pop over to elements in the left hand menu bar and go down to frames and click on a solo frame to add it to your workspace. You'll notice when you click on the little dots in the corners of the frame to resize it, a little measurement box will pop up so you can resize it easily to the size that you need for this project. Since I'm doing A5 dividers today, I'm going to resize this frame to 5.8 by 8.3 inches. You'll notice when you drag that corner dot that it's keeping the frame square. So just get it to the width that you want um, and then position it in the page so that it, it fits better so that you don't run off the page. And then once you've got it to the width that you want, then select that little dash line in the center of the bottom of the frame and drag it straight down. We're basically going to create the whole template on this first page. Um, so it's really important that your measurements are exact because you're going to end up duplicating this page to create all your other divider pages. So resize it until it's the perfect size for whatever project. Like I said, we're doing the A5 dividers on this one. So the page itself is going to be 5.8 inches by 8.3 inches. And then the, the tabs are going to stick out about a half an inch beyond that. To add your tabs, go over to Elements and go to Shapes and just click on the simple rectangle tool and it's going to drop a new square right into your project. Then just resize that one just like you did the frame. Um, this one won't hold the square sizing, so just make sure that it's... I like to start out with an inch by an inch. That way you can center it right over the main part of the divider page and you'll know that your tab is sticking out a half an inch. With your rectangle selected, click up top on the rounded corner option if you want to, um, and you can round the corners as much or as little as you like. Then just double check that you've got this tab um, aligned with the top of your frame and centered on the edge of your frame. And then send it to the back by right clicking, clicking on layer and clicking send to back. And that's just going to drop that tab behind your frame so that you can only see half of it. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you a tab that you know sticks out a half an inch and you know that it's lined up perfectly where there's no gaps. So if at the end of this, when you if you try to cut it out on like a PNG friendly cutting machine, there won't be any gaps at all and it'll cut each page out as one whole image. 
Next, we need to duplicate that original tab. Click on your tab and hold the Shift and Alt key at the same time and drag the tab down. And that's going to create a duplicate. Drop it right where you want it to be um, and then don't touch anything else and hold Control and press D to duplicate that same action and you can do that control d um, as many times as you want to create as many tabs as you want for this set don't worry about them fitting on the page right now we can adjust that in a second just make as many tabs as you want for this set i'm going to do eight for this set so once you've got all your tabs on there drag your mouse and select them all at once and then adjust the height so that it lines up perfectly with the bottom of your frame and then once you've done that, right click on them with them all selected, go to layer and send them all to the back. So you should have eight tabs if you're doing an eight tab set like I am, and your one frame. If you want to, you can select it all together, group it and recenter it. Um, just I'm a little OCD, it'll drive me nuts if it's off centered. So I like to do that, uh, but it's not, not necessary. You don't have to. Um, and then ungroup it so that they're all separate elements again. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this one page as our master for the whole set of tabs. So down at the bottom, you'll see the little thumbnail for the page. And we've just got one now because we've, we've just set this master up on one page. But we're doing eight tabs, so we do need eight pages. So just click on that little thumbnail at the bottom until it highlights it. Hold Control and press D to duplicate it to make as many pages as you need. Eight in this case. And the reason why that we're doing it this way is just so that all the tabs, we're going to end up deleting all the tabs that we're not using for each page, but by setting it all up together um, on the one page with all the tabs together, we can get all the tabs to fit exactly how we want them to, and they'll be perfectly lined up on every page going forward. So now you can go back through your template and delete the tabs that you don't need. So on page one, we need the first tab, obviously, um, and the rest can go. And then going over to the second page, we delete the first tab, leave the second, delete the rest, and you just repeat that process through every page. So the third page has the third tab, the fourth page has the fourth tab, and so on, and etc. And now once you've done this, your template is essentially set up. You can reuse this template over and over and over. You can even jump in and change the amount of tabs and modify it from there. So here's a good starting point that we want to preserve for later. So go up to File and go to Make a Copy. And that's just going to give you a new version to start that you can customize as you want without disturbing your original. So now to customize them, all we need to do is drag and drop images into all those different frames and customize the color of the tabs to match. To add images, you can either go over to Elements um, in the left-hand menu and search through Canvas Library. They've got a lot of great ones to choose from. Some are free, some do require the Pro account. And you can also click on the Uploads in the left-hand menu bar and upload your own images that you want to customize these with. If you want to use these magical animal images that I'm using in today's tutorial, you can grab them for free on my website. Just scan the QR code on the screen or go to the link to grab your copy. And then once you've uploaded your images, just click on them in your library and drag them right into the frame. You can double click on the image to shift it around in the frame as you like, and then select the tab and you can customize the color to match the image. Just click on the color switcher tool right up at the top, then click on the little rainbow with the plus icon. And then from there, you can click on the eyedropper tool and hover your mouse right over the image to select colors from within the image. Then just click on the thumbnails for the pages at the bottom to work your way through all the different pages from your new set that you're making. Now, before you finish and save, it's always good to look at all your pages stacked together so you can see how all the tab colors look together. So to do this, I'm just going to add a new page to my project and then copy and paste all the divider pages onto it. 
My computer's running a little sluggish right now, just trying to run the recording program to record all this. So I apologize for the, the skips and the lags. Um, but basically you just click on each thumbnail, select each page one at a time, and just jump back and forth to that new blank page. Um, so go to page one, use your mouse, drag and select everything, hold control and press C to copy it. Then jump back to that new thumbnail down at the bottom for the new page, hold control and press V and then jump back to page two and do the same thing. Select it all, copy, jump to the new page, paste. Go back to page three, select it all, copy, jump to the new page, paste. And just do all that um, over and over for each of the pages. And that way you'll have all of the pages on the same page. Um, you can line them all up together and then just keep sending the new page to the back. Um, or you can just start at the page eight and work backwards to page one um, if you want to too. So you don't have to relay them all. I just started at page one though, and then just added each new page in and sent it to the back. And then when you do this, it lines up all those tabs all together. So just so you can see how all the, the colors look together. So that way uh, we all know that the, the tabs already match the individual pages, but if you've got one that's a drastically different color scheme than the other the other tabs it might just stand out and look funny so this is just a a way to kind of clean it up and make sure that all the colors mesh well together so right away here i can already see that there's a couple of colors that i want to change um, and i don't want to change them from here because i want to make sure that the tabs look good with the corresponding page so we'll start with this owl one and it's just kind of too muddy brown for me so i'm just going to select the tab and pick a different color and then the important thing to note here is that when you change the color of a, a shape like this, you can either change just this shape or you can change all of the ones that are this color to the new color. So that's what we want to do here. If you change the tab and then change everything that color to the new color, it's going to automatically update that tab on the sample picture at the end of the document with, with all the tabs all together which is just a nice, clean, easy way to instantly update that with the new color so that you can see how it looks comparative to the, all the other colors. I hope that makes sense. So what I'm going to do here is select the tab, go to the color change, click on the eyedropper tool, and then I'm going to find a new color for this tab. And I think I'm going to go with this kind of like a grayish blue sky color because um, I think that'll go well with all the rest of the colors and it looks good with the individual owl picture. Um, so when you click on it, then click down in the bottom left-hand corner to change all, and then jump back to your preview page. And now you've got the updated color there. Uh, mine's taking a second to load just because my computer's lagging. Sorry about that. Um, but now you've got the updated color mixed in with all the other tabs there. And I think that that, that grayish blue color looks a lot better than the brown. Um, this other blue one, looks bad with the set. So I'm going to jump back over to my deer page and I'm just going to give that more of a muted blue color. Not a lot, just a little bit. So it's not so garish compared to the others. And so just select the tab, click on the color change tool, use the eyedropper tool and just go through the different colors till you find one you like. And then once you find one that you like, just click on the change all option again, and it's going to automatically update that tab on the end um, preview page. And that's it. When you're all done designing, go up to share in the upper right hand corner and click on download, then click PNG format and download just the pages that you need. Um, I've got a couple extra pages on this workspace, but I've got a original template and then I've got the sample page where I was looking at all the tabs together and we don't need those when we're downloading the set. So just download the pages um, that are the actual divider pages. In this case, pages one through eight. And that's it. You'll be able to use this template over and over to make unlimited sets of dividers. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe and save this video for later. Thanks so much for watching.